if we look at the history of it, uh, greenhouse gas emissions relate to our energy system to get all the services we want and the material things, production of steel and cement and so on. And, um, and those things relate to our wealth and our consumption. And then we may have blips in which the economy crashes for a while for various reasons. But if we look historically, then we've gone back to the things we want and like to do uh, and living in houses, using a vehicle, uh, heating those houses, using electricity and those things as long as your energy system is still based on coal oil and natural gas are going to be producing greenhouse gas emissions and to the extent that our wealth transfers or have wealth creation happens throughout the world our human emissions will continue to go up um, and i might just add uh, another side to this is um, i've long been in the game of uh, forecasting like predicting sort of what will be the demand for oil, what will be greenhouse gas emissions 10, 20, and 30 years from now. And um, what we've learned is that when we forecast, and sometimes it's the average person, but even experts, we get fooled by the what's going on right now. We assume that whatever's happening right now, we can just project into the future. So the economy's going down, we keep it going down. The oil price is going up, we keep it going up. And what we've learned is this is when we often are really wrong in our forecasts. So I have to admit that I'm hearing a lot in the media right now that I am very suspicious of, whether it's said by governments, media people, oil industry, environmentalists, where people are looking at a short-term development right now and then projecting off into the future from that. So my, my general message is um, our climate efforts need to stay the same, and I can elaborate that um, in another question perhaps. Uh, they have to stay the same, but of course the attention of governments is elsewhere right now, and we just have to recognize that. So the policies that we need to have implemented and fortunately, Canada has been in the last five years in a leadership role globally on this, are policies that, for example, phase out coal plants. So you, your country would have no more coal plants. Well, Ontario did this about 10 years ago, and now the federal government is requiring this right across the country. Uh, it's legislation, it's passed on this basis. Coal plants are being phased out and they would all be gone by 2030. They are also putting in a carbon price, a rising price that makes, would make gasoline more expensive. But as we can see with the fall in the price of oil right now, if there's a surplus of oil in the world, and there, there will be a, a, perhaps for a long time, then the price of oil falls and it's hard to encourage people to buy an electric vehicle or to encourage the blending of more biofuels. And so you need policies like a rising carbon price, uh, which we have, federally and in provinces. Um, but even if you didn't have that price, or regardless of whether you had that price, you, you're probably also going to need regulations. And the federal government is in the state fi near final stages of a clean fuel standard, um, which would be part of phasing out the use of gasoline and diesel in our transportation system. And then we need to be part, our federal government needs to be part of a global effort to make this happen. And they've started on that as well. So they've linked linked up the United Kingdom and now a growing number of countries called Powering Pass Coal to make coal phase out happen not just in some wealthy countries, but right around the world. And we need a similar movement towards, for example, electric vehicles, where we see countries as diverse as China and Norway are leading the way, and Canada needs to join that. So at a time like this, uh, what you're going to find is that those interests who make money by still sending out greenhouse gas emissions, are going to try to convince governments to stall or roll back climate policies. The Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers just came out and said to the federal government, oh, don't let the carbon price rise along its scheduled path. It was scheduled to keep rising. Oh, stop with the clean fuel standard. Don't implement it. So the very, and even other interests have said on the coal side, stop phasing out coal plants. So this is where the battle needs to be joined. 
these are the policies that we finally got in place. These are the policies that people will try to roll back. And these are the essential policies that we need to have still there and still increasing in stringency um, as we come out of this global shutdown related to the, the COVID pandemic. The pandemic has certainly removed climate concern from the headlines in the news, and certainly and justifiably. So, uh, you know, the, it's normal for humans to focus on that which is the most immediate threat. Climate change is an immediate threat, but the pandemic is a more immediate threat. And so that's just quite normal. What I have said elsewhere is that we get policy windows. It's, it's this combination of public concern for the climate, uh, no other major story crowding out the news, and the luck that in some jurisdictions we've elected climate sincere politicians who are putting in truly effective policies. That is some kind of carbon pricing or regulations or a combination. Those when those ephemeral uh, short term, we call them policy windows arrive, uh, then you we really need to act on them. And I can say that federally in Canada, we made really good progress in uh, especially after the election of the Trudeau government in 2015. So we we moved from a global laggard to being a global leader. And, um, and so now, uh, what we need to do is hold the fort and then as we come out of this pandemic, make sure that the policies that are already in place continue on their path uh, of rising um, stringency. And you know, th so it's normal that things divert governments. It's, <clears throat> but the climate challenge is a multi-decade challenge. Now, we have made small progress and otherwise mostly failed for three decades. That can happen for the next three decades. So we have to seize the opportunity when there are, when there are, when it arises uh, and then sort of hunker down when it doesn't. And my book, um, The Citizen's Guide to Climate Success, uh, there I even talk about pa pandemics and economic crises and so on. Uh, but what that book says is here is a simple strategic path, phasing out coal plants, phasing out the use of gasoline and diesel and transportation. Our policies are very simple. Climate concerned citizens need to be electing climate sincere governments and when, who implement those policies. And when they implement those policies, then individuals like you and me have choices to reduce emissions in our own lives. Because the biggest emissions in our own lives isn't you you know, not using a plastic straw anymore or something like that or composting. It's you making sure that your vehicle is electric or biofuel. It's you making sure that your home is run by an electric heat pump and that you're living in, therefore in a jurisdiction where the electricity is made without causing greenhouse gas emissions, which is most of Canada today and soon all of Canada if we stick with those policies. It, it could actually reinforce some of the messages of the book. And I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the messages of the book is that there are a lot of delusions and wishful thinking biases out there that prevent us from the very simple things that have to happen, which is a price on carbon or regulations phasing out coal and oil. And, but there have been people who say, oh, renewables are getting cheaper by the day and so renewables will soon beat out fossil fuels. Wind and solar will beat out coal plants and natural gas plants for electricity generation. Um, electric vehicles will beat out gasoline uh, vehicles and biofuel trucks will beat out uh, diesel trucks. And the problem is, is that first of all, the evidence that experts look at doesn't conform to that. It says fossil fuels are cheap and, and when we try to switch away from fossil fuels, 
then there will be even more competition among fossil fuel producers and the prices will fall. Coal will get cheaper, natural gas will get cheaper, and oil will get cheaper. And with the pandemic right now, we're watching that. We're watching it uh, in the case of natural gas and coal, but we're especially watching it in the case of oil. The price of oil is plummeting. What that tells you is that it makes it even harder for an electric vehicle to compete with a gasoline vehicle, for a biofuel pickup truck to compete with a, with a, with a diesel pickup truck. And so that's what it does is it confirms the essential need for rising carbon prices and or much more stringent regulations that phase out the use of gasoline, the use of oil, and phase out the use of coal to make electricity. So the message of the book becomes all that stronger in a world of the COVID-19 pandemic.